what we're looking at right here. Now, first, you can factor in any quadratic the GCF always. That's the first step. Always factor out the GCF. Doesn't matter what the polynomial is. It could be to the third degree, to the fourth degree, to the fifth degree. Always take out any GCF constant. Once you've done that, identify two possible cases. The first case has what's called a unity coefficient or leading coefficient. What does unity mean? We hear unity. Together. Together, like a team plays as one, right? So unity coefficient means A is equal to one. So when A, this leading coefficient here, is one, meaning you don't see anything there, we're going to use one technique that we're going to see in a moment. If A is not one, we're going to use a method that I call AC method, which is similar to grouping. Okay, like we looked at yesterday, grouping, but it's rearranging stuff to make grouping work. So let's look at this first case. Our goal when factoring something like this is to come up with two factors such that the sum of them add to B, so this 5 here, and the product of them adds up to give you C, whatever 6 is. So think about this for a second. Let's look at this example as our first one because this is a very easy example. We need to think about what two numbers multiply to give me C. So what numbers can multiply to give me 6? Give me all the numbers that multiply to 6. Okay, what else? Okay, what else? Whole numbers, absolutely. Integer values only. What else? Luca? Okay, what else? Good. Four choices, right? Don't forget the negatives. The negatives come up a lot, and we'll realize which one to pick when we look at the value of b. So the value of b in this problem is 5. So we want to come up with these same two numbers out of these four choices that sum to equal whatever b is. Well, which of those four choices adds up to 5? Only one of them does. Which one is it, not? Which of these four adds up to 5? Three and two only. Okay, three and two give you five. Be careful, please. Negative three and negative two gives you negative five, not five. So it turns out that our factors come out to be x plus three and x plus two. All right, those are the terms that go into the factoring. So if factoring this, it would be x plus three times x plus two. So whenever you don't have a one, or you don't have a non-unity leading coefficient, so whenever a is equal to 1, like in this case, find two numbers that multiply to give you c, you have many choices, and then figure out which one of those choices adds up to give you b. Right? It's the exact same process every time for case 1. For case 2, AC method I'll talk about in a minute. All right, let's do more examples with case 1 first to make sure we get it. We're taking a look. Try this on your own. List the factors of negative 28, not 28, but negative 28. And then see which of those sets of factors sums to give you 3. And if you get it real quick, that's fine. Just write it down. But I'm going to give a minute for everybody to do this. Am I forgetting anything? No. That's all of our factors of negative 28. Well, which of these sets of factors adds up to give you the B value in the middle, Mike? Yeah, the first one that we wrote, it turns out. So, would you really list all the factors every time? No, it doesn't make sense, right? But you understand what you could do if you need to figure it out? As soon as you get the factors, that works out there. So as soon as I wrote down that first set of factors, I would not write all these down if I'm doing this. I would do it up in my head. I would say, well, 7 and negative 4 actually gives me 3, so I'm stopping there. That's definitely my answer. So this, this is not really necessary. I was just showing you all the factors again. So what do my factors then look like, if that's the statement? 
What do I list as my factors if we circled 7 and negative 4? You know? All right, very good. So we literally take the factors. This is a 7 here that goes right there. This is a negative 4 that goes right there. And how do you know you're correct? How do you know you're correct, Ryan? If you multiply it back out. Multiply it back out. And multiply it back out. All right, so I'm sure that that was a review for some of you in the room right now. If it wasn't a review, that's fine. It might be new to some people, depending on what math you took. Okay? Yes, I'll go for it. Which of these sets to choose? Which of them adds up to give you whatever B is? What's B in this problem? Just B, though. It's just three. The X is going to part of B. Remember, B is the coefficient. So three is the one you want to add up to. None of these add up to give you three. This adds up to negative 27, 27. Negative 12, 12. This adds up to negative three. But this adds up to give you three. So sum these two integers together to see which of them will. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, with that said, let's go on to what's called AC method now. AC method occurs when this is not a 1 in the front right here. When there's not a 1 in the front of x squared, you're going to use AC method, which is also called grouping. Okay? If you've heard of this with a box, that's fine. You can do that. Okay? So here's how I do AC method. I approach the problem by looking at it, and I first find out what the quantity AC is, or the product AC. What's A in this problem? What's A? Look at three. Three. What's C now? Negative eight. Negative eight. What's three times negative eight? Will? Uh, negative. Good. So I start by listing AC, and I list the product of the first and last terms coefficients. I then find the factors of AC that add up to B. So the same process we just did. Factor, num factor the number negative 24 and figure out which of those sets of factors adds up to negative 10. I'm going to write them all out. I know some of you know right away. Okay, I just want to show. And there's also one more set, 24 and negative 1. And negative 24 and 1. Be careful, please. The common mistake is probably 6 and 4, because people think 6 and 4, well, that gives you 10. But it's not 6 and 4, it's negative 6 and 4. Or, ne or 6 and negative 4. These two do not sum to give you negative 10. So this is not it. This is not it. How about the third one? What does that give you? Um, no, no, positive or no, no, no. You had it the first time. It gives you negative 10. This one gives you positive 10 here. Okay? So, out of all these lists of factors, it's always, always going to work with one, by the way. You're not going to get more than one choice. Only one that works. So once you get the one that gives you the B value, you stop there. So this negative 12 plus 2 gives me whatever B is, which is negative 10. Now, this is where it differs from the other one. Those are not your answers. You break up the middle term into that, so let me explain. Rewrite the polynomial without the middle term. Then, hold on, green, there we go. Then, write the middle term with these two values, but make sure you put a, a w or whatever the variable is. So I start with the negative 12 and I put it right here. And then I take the 2 and I put it right here. And tell me real quick, have I changed, have I changed the quadratic really? I, mean, I know it looks different, but think about it. Have I actually changed it? Because negative 12w in 2w adds up to give you negative 10w. Isn't that what you had in the beginning? Negative 10 W in the middle? And these two quantities in green still add up to give you negative 10 W. Well now, look at the form it's in. This is perfect grouping form, isn't it? 
Think back to yesterday's lesson with grouping. Look at the first two together, then look at the next two together, and use grouping to do this. So look at these two together, and then look at these two together. What's the GCF of this first two sets of terms, I guess? What's the GCF right here of 3w squared minus 12w? 3w. Again, how do I know that? 3 is here. 12 is really 4 times 3, so there's definitely a 3 in there. w is here, and there's at least 1w over here, so we can't take out w squared, but we can take out at least w. Now, Will, how do I remember how to figure out what's here? So take this 3w and mentally divide it into here. What's 3w squared divided by 3w, Kelly? W. This is w. And then Kelly followed up. What's negative 12w over 3w? Negative 4. Negative 4. Matt, how do I know that this is right? How do I know that this part is correct? How can I do it? Yeah, you divide this in. Now, if I've divided it by it, how do I check x over this? Right. Multiply. Yeah, multiply. So once you divide it through, then you can remultiply. 3w times w plus 3w squared. 3w times negative 4 is negative 12w. So I know that's correct. Now, for this method to work, what does the other parentheses have to be over here? For grouping to actually work. What has to be in this other parentheses that's going to be left over over here? W. What is it? W minus 4. W minus 4 again. So start by putting it there. Start by putting it there. So do this. Because if it doesn't work, this isn't factorable. So we don't have to worry about it then. So let's see. Does it work? Can I take something out of these two terms over here such that I end up with W minus 4? 2. two. All right, so I take out a positive 2, and make sure you put a positive, please, not just a 2. I take out a positive 2, and if I take a 2 out of here, I'm left with W. Take a 2 out of here, I'm left with negative 4. And my last and final step, Niall, what can I do for this last step? How do I finish this off? This is term 1 now, right? This is term two. What factor is in both terms? W. Sure. But what factor? W is not a factor. Remember, a factor is a thing that's multiplying. So right here, in this term, the factors are 3, W, and the quantity W minus 4. The factors over here are 2 and the quantity W minus 4. Which factor is in both? W minus 4. W minus 4. You need to know what factors are. Remember, they're multipliers. W is not a factor here. Sure, it is here, but it's not in this term, right? Yeah. 4 is not a factor. The quantity W minus 4 is a factor. So take W minus 4 out in front. If I take a W minus 4 out of here, what's left over? If I take W minus 4 out of this whole thing, what's left over? 3W. 3W. In the second term, Niall, if I take W minus 4 out of here, what's left over? 2. Two. And it's a positive 2, right? Yes. So I put a positive 2, and that's my factored form. And that's my factored form. Now, when I was in high school, I did not learn AC method. And I was, I was constantly guessing and checking. For something like this, since the A value is 3, you know it's going to be 3W and W here. So you could start by putting those there and trying to figure out what these come out to be. And negative 4 times 2 gives you the negative 8 at the end. And you can just mix them up and see which one works. But AC method is guaranteed to work if it's factorable. So if you're good with number sense, and you're quick with numbers in your head, and you want to just try numbers out and you can do it, that's okay. But if you just try numbers out and you get the wrong answer on the test, I'm not going to give you partial credit. So if you're not certain of your answer, then please show the work. You follow what I'm saying? If you're definite that this is the answer and you can do this in your head and come up with this without doing all this work, that's fine. I don't mind it. Because I know that that does click for other people. But how do you know if you're right? So if you just write this answer down and it's wrong, I'm not going to give you any credit. Because you can check if this is right. How do you check that this answer is correct? Multiply it. Multiply it out. 
double distribute or foil this back out. Go ahead and do that real quick. Foil it back out or double distribute. See what you get. Should get it because it definitely is right, but I want you to prove it to yourself, okay? So you just foil. Okay? Giving me four terms and then combining the middle terms because they're like terms. Any questions on this technique? Show of hands and be honest, please. How many people have seen AC method this way to factor? Okay, for those that haven't, have you factored other ways when you have a leading coefficient that's not one? Quadratic formula, which is not factoring. That gives you the roots, right? Remember, the quadratic formula gives you the solutions, not the factors, which is different. Just be careful there. You just like the box method better. It's like the inverse box method, right? The opposite, where you list some things and find out what goes in spots. Yeah. Yeah. That works, but I don't think that that's as good a method. I like AC method. It, it's very obvious the way it works. I call it AC method, but I've never heard of that. I've always called it that. Because you're multiplying AC in the beginning, and you just list your factors. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, what is that called? Fail proof or fail safe? You can't, really, full proof. Yeah, you can't really make a mistake if you do it the right way and follow the steps. Okay? Now, what happens if you get to this line right here and you got W minus 4 here, but this came out to like W minus 3? What does that mean about this problem? That might not be W minus 4. Then what? One. Maybe the first one is wrong. Good. Maybe the first one is wrong. What else could it mean? Or maybe it's not factorable. One of those two things. Very good. If you don't get the same thing in those parentheses, check that you did it right first. Maybe you did it state, like Ryan was saying. If you check and you get the same answer again, that means it's not factorable. Okay? Good. Very good, guys. Um, let's look at the next thing. Earlier in the year, which is called the square of a sum. We talked about this in a previous section where we have something like this. Okay, this was the example we did in the past. We said, what do you get if you, if you were to multiply that out? And I remembered, or I reminded you, which some of you forgot in your test, that you need to FOIL. You cannot distribute the square. Only when it's this. If it was x times 2 squared, this becomes x squared times 4. Here, you need to think of this as FOIL. Well, this rule up here is the opposite of that. That's what it's saying. If you pick up on a trend that this is the square of something, this is the square of something, and the middle term is the product or double the product of those square roots, you can factor it this way. This is not as obvious of a factoring method. Okay, so you don't always have to use it. Let me explain what I mean. Look at part A. Look at the first and third terms. The first and third terms in part A. What do you notice about them? They are what? Give me a terminology to describe them. Perfect squares. perfect squares. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. So start right away by thinking about what their square roots are. What's the square root of t squared? Kelly? T. t. What's the square root of 16? 4. Now... What's t times 4 and double that? Again, take the product of those two things you just wrote down and then double it. What's 2 times t times 4 give you? What does 2 times t times 4? 8t. 8t. Is that the middle term, Kelly? Yeah. So that is correct. You can just put a plus sign in the middle and that's the answer. Again. It's a technique that helps us sometimes factor things out that are a little bit tricky. If 
you can take the square root of the first and the third term, and then you take double the product of those numbers. If you get the middle term, then that is indeed the sum or the square of a sum. How can you check that this is right? Well, if you were to factor this, what are the factors of 16? 16 and 1, 4 and 4, 8 and 2. Which of these adds up to give you B? Well, positive 4 and positive 4 adds up to B. So this would factor into T plus 4, T plus 4. Well, if I don't want to do all that work, I can use that technique and I get right up to the answer. So, again, you can use regular factoring. For part D, you can use AC method if you wanted to. But this idea of the square of a sum makes it a quicker answer. Okay? Makes it a quicker answer. This kind of thing is very helpful on any kind of standardized test. That's why I show you a lot of these shortcuts. Because although it's not necessarily needed for every problem, you can use regular factoring, it's much quicker. Okay? Try part B on your own. Try part B on your own. Are the first and third terms perfect squares? Yes. They are. The first term, what's its square root? Zero. And the third term, now? Five. Now, 2 times 5 times u, what does that give you? What's double the product of these two quantities give you? Double the product of them. 10 u. But do we want a 10 u here? What do we want? So what should I make this? Make this a negative 5. That's where that little plus or minus symbol comes into play from the last slide. Make that a negative 5 and square it, and that is your answer. <clears throat> because negative 5 times u times 2 gives you negative 10u, which is that middle term. Again, you could list the factors of 25, those of which are 5 times 5, or 25 times 1, and realize that 5 times 5 gives you 10, so you're going to need negative 5 and negative 5, giving you the negative 10 in the middle. Okay? Paul, you look like you had a question. You look like there, but then look. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, how did we get from, like, where's the, the, the middle number, which uh, actually now? It's over here. Yeah. Okay, look and notice that these are perfect squares. So start by just writing them here without the last side. Then say to yourself, what's double the product of these two? Well, the product of these two is 5u. Double that is 10u. But what do we want here? We don't want 10, we want... So we make that a negative sign. So therefore, if I multiply 2 times negative 5, it's negative 10. Times u is negative 10u. Well, this, when multiplied and then doubled, gives you this. Therefore, this is true, so you can put a square there. And that is the answer. So in reality, remember that you have two factors. You have, okay, that's what you have here, really. That's what this is saying. So you could write it this way, or you could write it this way. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Okay, either way is fine. Any questions on part B? All right, try part C. You might want your calculator. Try to figure out the square root of 6.25. Or feel free to convert 6.25 to a fraction. You can do that also. Six point two five is obviously not a perfect square, right? That we know of. But if you look at it in fraction form, it actually is a perfect square in fraction form. What's six point two five as a fraction? Six and a quarter. Say again? 
It takes one quarter, and what is it as an improper fraction? 625 over 100. Okay, but reduce that. 25 over 4. 25 over 4. You want more on this, right? 25 over 4 is really what 6.25 is. So if you wanted to for this problem, you could do this like this. And then notice that last term is now a perfect square. And I know it's not obvious, but 25 and 4 are both perfect squares. So actually it is a perfect square here. Not a perfect integer square, obviously, but it is a perfect square. So let's go through this. So if I start by looking at the square root of this one, it's w. The square root of this is what? What's the square root of 25 over 4 in fraction form on 1? 5 halves. What's 5 halves times w times 2? Remember, double the product of these two. And there's a minus sign here, so we know it's going to be minus already. But take the product of these, which is 5 halves w, and double that. Oh, 5w? Just 5w. Isn't that what you want in the middle? Is the middle 5w? So this just turns out to be that. No, one negative. And put, put the negative. Yep. So that's what I'm saying here. Just carry it on the end. Carry it on the sign every time. Okay? So when you get the answer, just look at the middle, middle term and sign. If it's negative, just carry it on the negative. So 5 halves times 2. Well, 5 halves times 2, that's just 5. You should be able to do that in your head. And you multiply this by 2 over 1. 2 is cancel. It makes up 5. 5 times w is just 5w. Okay, this kind of a problem is very difficult to factor. You can't really list the factors of this. I mean, it's almost impossible to do this with the first method that we use to solve today. You really have to think of this as the square of a sum or the square of a difference. All right? Now, had you not converted it to a fraction, the square root of this, the square root of this is 2.5, which is really just 5 halves. Okay, 2.5 times 2.5 is 6, well, I think of it as 25 squared is 625. So 2.5 times 2.5 is 6.25. That was, by the way, 625 before. That's where that comes into play. Okay, but again, 5 halves is the same thing. How about the last one? Let me write it down for a sec. The first and the third term, they are perfect squares. What are their square roots? Ben, give me the first and third square roots. What are they? Um, 2p. Good, and? And 3. Good. 2p and 3. So we identify that they're perfect squares, and we say, well, that might work. The middle term is positive, so let's put a positive here and write it as squared. Well, is that true? Take the product of these two. What's the product of these two? Anybody? 6p. And then double 6p is? 12p, the middle term. Okay, again, recognize that this is a perfect square of which its square root is this. Recognize this is a perfect square, and its square root is this. We see the positive sign, we carry it down. And then we repeat, or we think to ourselves, all right, well, this is really 2p plus 3 times 2p plus 3. Feel free to foil it back out, and you'll get the correct answer. Let's finish with this last example. Easy. So you really need to practice what we just did there. It becomes second nature if you practice enough, enough examples and you look for that first and third term that have perfect squares in it. Okay? How about this one? Part A. Part A. How would you go about part A? What would you do? What might be the easy way to do this? There's a hard way and there's an easy way. What's the easy way? Yeah? You can rearrange. rearrange it. What do you got? So literally, carry all the signs, but write it in decreasing degree. Please, write all your polynomials in decreasing degree. It makes it look a lot better, actually. And when you get to this method called rational root theorem, or PQ method for learning in the year, you need it to be in the right order. So please write them in decreasing degree. It just makes more sense. It's logical. 
Now, at this point in time, you never want your leading coefficient to be negative. It makes it messy. So what should I do? Yeah, so in essence, factor out, right? Factor out a negative 1. When you factor out negative 1, this becomes x squared. And what about the other two? They become? Yeah. Okay, they become negative. So as, as Lucas said, it's like you're dividing everything or multiplying everything by negative 1. So factor out the negative 1. Remember, you can't just ignore the negative 1. The problem says to factor the following polynomials. Negative 1 is one of the factors here. Now, we have an easier problem to solve. Tell me, and I'll point as I talk. Paul, I want you to help me with this one. What numbers multiply to give me negative 8? Uh, and which of those four add up to give me the B value, which is negative 2 here? The first one. I completely agree, okay? So that means my factors are x minus 4, x plus 2. Any questions on part A? Part B. Part B. What are the factors of 4? It's already in the correct form, so you don't have to do anything. What are the factors of 4? Careful, it's positive four, so you're just adding an extra negative there. Okay? That's alright. So, which of these sets adds up to give me positive three? Which of those four sets of factors gives me positive three? I see a four and a one, so I think a positive three. But what? Yeah, it's negative five. And this makes five. And that makes four. And that makes negative four. So do any of these work? No. So is this factorable? No. This one is not factorable. So we're going to see in the next section when we want to solve for solutions to equations that usually we factor it, set it equal to zero, and then solve. Here you use what Luca mentioned earlier as the quadratic formula to get the solution. But this cannot be factored. It's not factorable. What is the method where you just take the square root of the you take the square root of which ones? Oh, because they're perfect squares? Well, we could try that, and we could say this. That's a good point. Look, Charles notices that they're both perfect squares, right? So we could start by doing that, but it doesn't work because double u is 2u times 2 gives you 4u. This is 3u. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, it didn't work with the square sums. Obviously tonight, work on your homework, guys. Start on your problem set over the weekend. Don't ignore it.